MCC34. The event, full of connection issues, and the MCC community being reasonably angry about the scalable changes that happened in the event. This is one of the events that proved that rising stars can indeed shine the game, as well as people established in the roster. So that comes MCC34 Cyan Coyotes, the team that likely is broken to some people's eyes, or just another balanced team, like Ollie's and Velvet's Pascal events being not that great, and then Sapnam and Shadoon's being on a rise after the unfortunate events. So putting them together surely makes them dominant, right? Yes, uh, now you can click off the video now. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. Nah, nah, let's let's move on. Let's dive deep down deeper to why this team won MCC 34. Firstly, this team do not have any known practices to their names. Velvet still streams only Minecraft events. Ollie is singing while playing Valorant. Shadoon is doing some other variety Minecraft stuff. And Sapnap is Sapnap. So no MCC practices whatsoever, well, maybe a few. So when it comes to an event, people may assume that they are not going to be dominant, not keeping in mind of their past performances even though they barely touched anything MCC related before the event. With the exceptions of Bell, the update videos, and the announcements of course. So then comes the event, with them being hip and standing still, of course, in the team introductions, yeah. But to start, Bingo but fast. Now, they did averagely well in the game itself with 21 crabs, but only 5 lines to their name, compared to some other teams with a little bit more to their name. But this game also proves that Shadoon can also be dominant in the good old game of Bingo, with of course his experiences in the genre days before the event. Really impressive for him. And then comes Parkour Attack, which is the same story in terms of performances, but with some full swivels in there, but that doesn't compensate the losses that they have compared to the other teams. And then comes their favorite game, Meltdown, which is one of their top games because of their performances in recent events. Shadow and Ali in MCC31, Sapnap with, well, the history of the game, and Velvet in MCC30 not being carried of course. So they start with a clear classic sapnap strategy and literally everybody's strategy of rushing to the center. Yeah. And it worked almost every single time. With them having a win or being wiped in unfortunate events like round two with literally half of the teams in a single room. But overall, they got second place, pushing them to fourth overall. And finally, Ending the first half is holding the ball, which again, same story as the first two games, they do not fancy holding the ball at all. But hey, Shadoon is surprisingly the top frag in that game. So those four games, 3 for all. Not bad I shall say for the first half. The second half however is where they really boost themselves up. Starting with Paco Warrior which is the opposite of what is said, because the multipliers that they do not have too much of and the rising skill bar for the game, because of, well, MCC Allen. Those factors really pushed them down quite a bit. And then Skype battle happened, and safe to say, passive plays for them really work out for the team. By of course, uh, building a casual fort at the center and towards the end, expand and overwhelm the center with TNT and their knockback swords. What comes next is this. Throw TNT, throw TNT, throw TNT. Got a levitation spark. Oh, shoot, I'm dead. No. Oh no, what happened? I, I got so many kills, I got six kills. Good job, good job, good job. Yeah, oh good my shit, God. I mean. I, got, I killed myself with the fucking thing, whatever. I just killed myself, I think. Yeah, I killed myself too. Oh, killer, killer! Nice! Only, it's only, it's only five breaths and below you. He's at you one! Yeah! Let's go! Let's fucking go! We fucking won! This game, 
thanks to Shadun's time on MCC Island and that possibly map-breaking strategy pushed them to be first overall, with a decent coin gap between them and the third place team. Sky bases are really something else for Sky Battle, and this team really utilized that passive play at first and an aggressive at the end approach. As well as the map's tight center of course, this is by far one of the maps that people might hate the most, yeah. That domination does not stop there, with to get to the side being their pass to the final. Ritually, with them only focusing on team bonuses with some top placements sprinkled on there. And yep, multiple first team bonuses, carry him there. Go with the people, 6 seconds, 5, 4. Or just go to the people, yeah, just go to the people. Yes, nice. first whole team bonus! Nice, oh my nice, God. nice. Go, 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 we're gonna get first team bonus. You guys, yeah, you guys are good. Guys, yeah, guys. 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 Nice. 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 Yes, 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 yes. I did it. Okay. Ah, yeah. Yes. Go red. 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 Go red. You got this? Yes. Yes. Oh yes. my god. Nice. Oh my god. Oh, Holy fuck. Go. Oh, also, people not finishing Terra's full force in the first round really impacted this quite a bit as well. With a gap already settled in after this round. And then comes Sense of Time and Grid Runners. Now in this scenario, the coin disparity right now is indeed in science favor. And to be frank, Grid Runner seems the best choice, with no coin disparity in the game whatsoever, unless you really crush all the rooms in a very fast-paced manner. Sense of Time is very risky in this case, as it is really stressful and can be an all-or-nothing game to some, like Yellow for example, which even though they did not exactly have the exact reason of what I'm aware of, the factor comes down to stress that they have going to the game, despite being lacking behind. And this is also the reason why that they won sense of time first, because of the risk factor and the stress. So with that, Jerome shows script runners, it was played, and voila! No change in team placements whatsoever. With an already established coin gap prior to grid runners. So dodgeball time, and to keep it short, that this is a nail biting one, with back and forth, and of course, yet again, the top player opposing Sapnap's team uh, did not play. This is a common trend now for Sapnap's dodgeball, to say the least. And with them sharing arrows because of Sapnap not being the top frag. They won with an intense dodgeball to their name. Yeah! yeah! Give me that shit, baby! Oh, 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 oh. oh my god! Oh my god! Let's go! Oh. <laughs> there we have it. The player with the most wins currently and a new winner to the Hall of Fame. What Cyan really tells you about is the chemistry behind the team because of their time in squid craft and rising skills that they have event by event. And it worked out pretty well at the end. With that kind of event done, the next Twitch Rivals one is up, and winners this time will earn a whooping $5,260 to their name. Who will be the grand prize winners? We will have to see. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and keep on watching Dewey Shuffle. I'll see you all later, hopefully when I'm not lazy of course, bye bye.